let's uh, go. Right. My name is Trevor Ward. Um, I've been developing business applications for over 25 years now, um, since 1999, when mobile JavaScript had uh, unfortunately been doing it a long time. Um, <laughs> and if anyone has been, there's a dom in, in where? 1999? Didn't exist. <laughs> we had some good coding times at that time. Um, and the last four and a half, five years, I've been doing pure mobile development using the accelerator tooling, um, which I think we can do a talk on later on tomorrow if you want to go see that. But, so, why are we here? Talk about Grunt, learn about JavaScript, and have a look at the uh, development workflow and see whether we can improve it and enhance that. What do I mean by the workflow? Anything you do on a daily basis to develop code, walk down the street, and basically anything you can automate, um, as I did, as did in the last talk about uh, testing, anything you can automate to remove the human element, remove the error factor. And where will we end up? Hopefully, you'll end up with a full grunt implementation which you can take away and use um, on your day to day coding. Okay. Hi, Stephen. So, what is grunt? Okay. It's a JavaScript task runner. That's all it is. Um, there are others apart from Grunt, there's Gulp, a few other things, but Grunt was the first one. Um, and all it does is control JavaScript tasks, uh, which are predominantly node modules. And currently, I think there's some 14,000 tasks, node modules you can download to use with Grunt to automate your day to day tasks. It being Node, if it doesn't exist, you can just write it. So, there really is a limitation on Grunt. So, on to the interesting stuff. First steps, it's all Node. All the tasks are Node modules, Grunt's Node file. Right, installing Grunt. How many people here use Node? Most of you, okay. So, you should recognise that command. NPM, Node Package Module. Manager, sorry. Um, and if you haven't used it, it is pretty straightforward. Everything's available, so let's just go through it. Yeah. The NPM install command. And minus G. In Grunt, you can install the node modules locally or globally from the package manager. So if you've installed node, minus G just makes it global, accessible across the whole system, as opposed to just in the working directory you're in. And as we'll see in a bit, most of the Grunt modules are installed locally. The final part of the command is the actual module name, in this case being the Grunt CLI. Okay. For those not using Node and never having touched it, it's a bit outside the scope of this talk, um, but everything you need to know about Node can be found at node.js.org. If you haven't used Node to use Grunt, you will need to install the whole Node program. Right, Node and NPM. Again, a bit outside the talk of what the NPM is, but the Node Package Manager um, 
the website gives you the ability to find what you're looking for. There's currently, when I did the last search, 14,236 results for Grunt module. So quite a lot of people have coded um, solutions to everyday tasks which you'll need to use. And I think the likelihood of you having to write a new one is very, very low, but you might have to modify something. The workflow. What is it? As I, as I explained in the introduction, it's basically what you do on a day-to-day -day basis to produce your applications, your code base, and everything else. The importance of that is to try and improve your day-to-day -day working practices, to try and remove the human errors, to try and build on what you do time and time and time again. So, how does Grunt help? It eliminates a human error. It enables you to get the tasks which you're trying to do. Say you, you want to do your syntax checker, you want to do your links against a single file or against the whole data, your whole code base or whatever else. It enables you to do that in a very easy, simple way and get the results back very, very quickly. Um, what we're going to be doing um, for the rest of this talk is setting up Grunt to watch JavaScript files and process it, and at the end, there'll be a whole Grunt file which you can download from Bitbucket for you to use within your project. So this is going to be a fairly basic introduction to how Grunt is set up, configured and works. Um, I learned the limitations of 14,000 modules, so no, not really. What do you want to do on a computer system? Grunt runs JavaScript tasks, but it doesn't have to be a JavaScript task you want it to run against. So you can get Grunt to, run to run Java jobs for you. Um, Jasmine, uh, Jasmine tests jobs and everything else. So the task you can run don't have to be JavaScript, but the code grunt runs is. Okay. Setting up grunt. How many people have used grunt? So those who have will know that there's two files predominantly. The grunt file.js um, which is where all the configuration for the jobs you want to run and tasks you want to really set up, and the package.json, which is the standard node package file containing uh, your dependencies and uh, run name, and etc. And uh, as mentioned, they're all node modules, um, which you can install and configure as you need. Um, virtually all node modules, no open source, so you can go in and change them to do whatever you need to do. So it's very, very flexible and powerful. So let's start looking at the uh, actual configuration files and setup. Package.json to create it. First thing you need to do is decide on your working directory, and you do this in your parent directory not where you're storing the code. So if you've got a workspace and you want to create a project for Connect, uh, in that Connect directory, you would have your app, your app directory for your files, your tests, directory for your tests, and you'd also have this grunt set up at that level. NPM it just creates a basic um, package.json file, and if you just use NPM in it, it gives you a wizard to follow where you can put that basic information in, press enter, and that's the file that gives you the input. Package.json has to exist. The thing about the package.json file is to maintain it going forward, really, you shouldn't have to edit it at all. Uh, by following the grunt commands to install the modules you want and everything else will automatically update it. 
Um, then you can't use really anything if, if you want to change the version number, and there's a grunt job to do that. If you want to change the name, and there's a grunt job to do that. If you want to change the description, and there's another grunt job to do that. So you don't actually need to physically modify it, but sometimes grunt is overkill. So changing name, version, and description, that's not easy just to edit it. Okay. Grunt watch. This is always the first module I set up and configure in any JavaScript project I'm working on. So that doesn't matter whether it's native script, whether it's titanium, whether it's node, or whether it's web. It makes no odds whatsoever. Always the first um, module I set up. Looking at the uh, command itself, we've got N npm install again. The actual node module. Now, with Grunt, with the way it works, most of the key Grunt modules start with Grunt config. So there's the watch one, there's the JS links one, there's the JS links one, there's the JS stub one, there's, there's hundreds of them, but most of the key ones which you would use on a daily basis you start with run dash country. So they're fairly easy to find. And again, all the modules can be found at the NPM um, repository. That last bit of the command actually updates the package.json with the dependencies for your grunt installation. Um, if you took off the dash dev, it would save it as a production dependency as opposed to a development dependency. But for grunt, you don't want any production because you're never going to release a grunt module that is there for your day to day usage. And that's the uh, block of code you it puts in. The package stuff right so far. Okay, no modules for those who don't use Node. Um, installing the grunt watch command gives you a new directory, node underscore modules, where you installed it. And if you notice from the previous command, it didn't have the minus G, which means it installed it locally under node modules in the root directory of your project. and all the dependencies regarding watch are installed. So this is a brand new install on my machine where I've copied out what was installed. So as you can see, the grunt contribute watch is installed, but so are all those other node modules. But we haven't asked for that to be done. So the watch module has a set of dependencies and it's about four or five of those dependencies. So it also installs those when you do that. And the dependencies associated to the other modules are automatically installed when they're installed. And we'll see later how to physically install all of that straight away. Okay, and the fact that all of those net modules have been installed shows you how important it is to have that saved dev on the end of it to update your package.json file. Okay, got it wrong. Um, once, once you set up Grunt, once you set up your know, development area and everything else, you don't do it every day. You might do it once every three months, six months, five months, two years. And it's quite often that you go, oh shit, what's the command I'm supposed to use? <coughs> so, some of the common mistakes um, which are taken. Global versus local, the minus G. If you install globally, it, you're not really going to be able to use it within the grunt area because it tries to do global and it's looking for local dependencies which don't exist. So installing it locally 
is, is quite useful. I continually get that one wrong. Put it in the wrong directory. You've suddenly gone in, you're in your apps directory as the first of the pen. Master one, oh, I want this now, module form. Oh shit, how do I do, how do, I do that? Um, and the next one is you forgot the save down. Now, if you forget the save down, you can just go to the package.json and add it. But you need to make sure that you've got the right version under the absolute correct name and everything else. So, the easiest and simplest thing to do is if once you've noticed you got it wrong, just run the command npm remove everything else the same. So if you've got a minus G in there, it will uninstall it globally. If not, it will uninstall it um, locally. The save dev on the end will remove it from the package. .json file. And then just go to where you want it to install it or how you want it to install it and then it It's a very, very simple way of doing it. Um, if you've installed it in your app, in your app directory, it will remove everything you've installed except for the node underscore modules directory, which you can just remove or leave there, it will just be empty. Okay. Jump file. 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 is the main configuration file where you set up all the tasks um, you want to run. And as you'll notice, it's a standard CommonJS singleton using the module that export. Now, this is something which is recommended by Grunt be put in uh, to load the package.json metadata into the Grunt when you run it. It's very useful for much more advanced Grunt usage. I've never actually used it, I'll just put it in there because they're recommended to do it. Um, I've never actually found a physical use for it. Um, right. So, watch. We install the Grunt country watch module, and this is where we configure what we want it to do. Now, each module has an internal name, so for watch, for the Grunt country watch, it's watch, for JS duck, it's JS duck, and stuff like this, and that would be your parent object element. Then we set the paths. So, <coughs> under this we can have multiple subtasks to JS watch. For this example, I've, I've got a full demo, a full example later of a multiple task. But for this one, we're just setting up a JS task so that we can monitor when JavaScript files are changed. Per se. Um, and as you'll see, I've got grubfile.js in there defined hard coded. That's predominantly because Grunt doesn't always include the parent directory when it checks in the watch command, so I'll put that in because I always want to check where to change that to make sure I've got it correct. And the next um, command is just basically everything from where you are downwards. So you can actually put app forward slash star star forward slash star dot js and it will do every single JavaScript file in that app directory. If you, only want, if you only want to test that. And um, in the work one, we actually have tests on that one to, to check the test directory and all the way down our whole directory structure. And it also doesn't have to just be JavaScript files. So you can have a different subtask for XML files, HTML files, JSON files. And there's grunt jobs which are all valid, which you can run against those uh, subtasks to do. So in grunt watch, the next thing we do is we set up the task and we'll see where the tasks are actually set. That's just a uh, regular JavaScript array of the task, task names which you want to run. And the options. In this case, we're doing a, a change event. 
So we're going to be capturing when a JavaScript file is saved and run the tasks which are up above it. So for every node module you've set up for Grunt, you let the appearing tasks in, send a command. Every single one has to have that in there for you to use the, the Grunt file. And then, this is where you register the task. You don't have to have any registered tasks whatsoever. If you've only got watch set up and you've got five subtasks underneath it, that's it, that's all you have to do. Won't really do a lot, but that's all you have to do. Default will always go to whichever task you've set. Now, for the default task, I set it to watch.js, which is the task which I want to call my watch.js one. I could just set it to watch, which would refer back to the configuration module name, or any other task I want, or any list of tasks I want. So for any of these registered tasks, as you will see later, you can have multiple subtasks running at the same time. Okay, running grunt, not hard. Command line, command line, grunt. That's the most simplest you can do. What that will do is run the default. So if you said you if you've registered your default task and you've got your series of tasks you wanted to do, that will just run the default one. The module, Grunt Watch, as you saw, we defined within the configuration Watch, which is the name of the Grunt Watch module, and we can just run that module. So we don't even have to register a task because we've got it defined. We can run it specifically there. And the third one is to run the task directly, which I named Grunt Watch.js, and that's actually running the registered task. So. However many tasks you've got set up, however many subtasks you've got set underneath that one, you can run them at any point in any way. So, if we run any of those three commands, we would get exactly the same um, response on, in the command prompt, which is just this running task. And it does sit there waiting. That's our watch done. It just sits there waiting for it to happen. And I did this. I set it up, set up a new directory, installed it, and it failed to run. For watch, you need to install Grunt locally. We've installed the Grunt CLI globally, and for quite a few no modules, you have to install the Grunt locally. And again, as you can see, we put the save dev on to make sure the package manager is updated. Not every file. Within <coughs> the Grunt file.js, under watch and under a lot of the subtasks you can set up, when you set your file up, unless you specify the single file as we did for Grunt.js, that's all you do. It will apply to every JavaScript file. So we've got the star star forward slash star.js defined, which is monitoring every JavaScript file in the subdirectory. And regardless of what you do, it will automatically run the tasks which you set against every JavaScript file. Which can be a bit bloody annoying if all you want to do is leave the file and save it. And you've got 300 files in your directory. Been there, got pissed off with it. <laughs> so, that bit of code which, thanks to a gentleman called Dan, uh, who worked with me in figuring it out because it is not easy to find this one piece of code, will actually work on the watch task and enable us to set a subtask files, source directory down to the individual file which we've just saved. 
and you can set that up for as many subtasks as you want. As you, as you will do that. Okay. I hate life, don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, not that. But we have got it all. Oh, it's not showing off, is it? Um, sorry, hold on. I haven't shown that. I told you life, don't know what's always going on. Okay, so here is a typical group model. And as you'll see, it is literally a common JF singleton in each model. And I focus when I set up a new JavaScript project. Can you all read that text out there? I focus on three areas. Making sure the syntax is correct. Making sure the code formatting layout, look and feel is correct. And enabling us to produce a documentation from it. So if you've not used JS Doc to document your JavaScript code, but you want to make sure uh, documentation at the end of it, have a look at it, it's actually pretty nice. <coughs> so, the first uh, node module I use is copy, enabling me to copy the documentation items out into their output directory. And as you will see, it shows really nicely how we can set up subtasks for that. And if when you're registering a task, you just do copy, all of those four subtasks will be run when you do it. Straight up to each other. And for this one, you can see we've got the source file and the output directory. JS stuff makes it the configuration a little bit more interesting because we've got generate, which is the default command for the JS stuff module. But we've got source, files, the destination, and where my configuration files set up from that. So you can start to see that within Grunt, the subtasks are individual tasks, multiple directory structures, um, and as we'll see shortly, multiple tasks can all be run from both setting just within the uh, module you're doing. Beautify is one of my favourite um, JavaScript jobs. We've just got the file set up. And the single here is just group files. Okay. By creating this single, enables me to use that code at the end and just swap out what that file name is for the file I want to do. So what we've got there is two subtasks, one which will beautify every single file in the JavaScript file, every single JavaScript file in the directory or just an individual file on its own. 
Jaya Sint. I think you all use Jaya Sint on your Java crew. Who doesn't use Jaya Sint on the Java crew? Um, a couple of options there. Just basically remove some of the crap out of the Jaya Sint check. And you can literally just set all the options up for Jaya Sint as that. And all of those options will be applied to every subtype you are there for to And in the main one, we just set the file and we just set and the single file again, enabling us to hit against the whole directory for just a single file. And watch. Now, I just have JS Watch set up in here. And as you can see, the files are there. I validate JS Single, I fill up JS Single, and I check for the file change. And the file change just resets Grunt Watch back to do that. My options are change, and we don't spawn them in the And the final thing I have in this um, basic setup is available tasks. As your grill file grows, you'll forget what tasks you've got set up in there, because again, you won't use most of them on a day-to-day -day basis. And having available tasks, as you'll see shortly, gives us that the ability to see that. So, we've got all the load NPM tasks for the modules which we've installed. We've got the grunt chat register task file change, which resets the screen up after you've the watch is completed, and we have all of these tasks, register tasks set up. So, for me, when I'm creating my documentation from the project, I just run, run, run docs, and that does a JS doc build of that, copies the layout, and as you can see, we go across. Does a whole multitude of some tasks. Before we watch JS, validate JS main, single. So as you can see, you can build up grunt using those register, register tasks with just a few modules to give you a workflow process which will enable you to um, hopefully uh, minimize the human error factor. And at the end, We've got that single file capture for the group one, group watch. Um, and as you can see, it's on the JSN single files.org, and we've also got it on the beauty file. If you set up tests, you can set it up for the test task, um, so that when you save a test file, it will automatically just run whatever test framework you're using against that single file. And all of that can be done through the group watch. No. How does it run? I had all of this set up nicely on the screen. But not, not the so, that's what we've got in the um, directory. Very little. And What we'll do now is just run it. So I've just run the registered task, which I've got set up in, in Grunt. What we'll do, we'll go into an app like JS file where we've got set up. Not really doing a lot. I got the syntax correct. So if I now switch back to terminal, you'll see it's check the the litigates the file automatically for me. Clean. It's then beautified the file, as you notice the code just automatically formatted itself. And it's completed and waiting for the next one. If we go back here and just remove that. To show you an example, 
growth watch. Not only told me I'm missing a semicolon, it's told me the exact line I'm missing it on. I said, fix it, otherwise I ain't going to carry on. Now, the other thing about grunt, and when I say it's not going to carry on, the thing about grunt is you have, in my grunt watch JS, I have multiple subtasks for the JS link and the beautifier. It won't run the beautifier in three tiles. So it's actually, if you're coding and you've got that in the background, and you do something like, and don't control that, it won't actually beautify it until you've got all your syntax correct. But by just using that group watch with link to beautify, you can instantaneously see what's decoding if your syntax is correct or anything else. But JS Leeds is actually really good at the So, uh, what else have we got for you? Package.json. Pretty much the same as we've got before, but as you can see, all the dev dependencies for those modules are now. It doesn't put in the dependencies of the modules you've installed, and the dependencies of the... Let me try to explain that one. So, I installed JS Duck module, it said, I need to install JS Duck. JS Duck has another five modules it depends on. That's actually in the package.json of JS Duck, not here. Okay. And, there we go. Now, then we had to get rid of Grunt Watch. Grunt Watch is just to control C out of it. Grunt Docs. Done. Yeah, there's only app.js, it's not going to take very long. But what does that give us? <coughs> it gives us, and this will be appearing on the screen very, very shortly. A complete documentation of my JavaScript project which is app.js, which doesn't have a lot in it. So if I call that a customer. Good dark, so JS, that's good. That's just produced this. All I've got is an app.js file. But I've been able to configure it all up to show what I want. We'll go into there. App.js just does base app, which does this. So if you document the code properly, JS Duck can give you a whole output of your whole source code, base code for people who are coming into the project new to be able to look and research what you've got. And you completely store all the files and functions that have been picked And you can even add guides to it to do that. Part of this setup, uh, the whole basic setup for JS Duck now as well. So, clean the NPM package manager. We've seen the node website. Grunt has its own, Grunt has its own website. Gruntjs.com. Very nice, very informative. Everything I've got about Grunt has come from here. I haven't gone off to third party. Most stuff. It's a bit convoluted in places. It doesn't quite go into the depth of detail of how you set up this, how you set up that, and what each element does. It just says, here's a node module, follow this. Um, so. Before we move on to the final part, it looks like time is about right. Tasks. If you notice the last task I set up was tasks. Grunt tasks gives me a whole list of my grunt tasks. And as a comment on that one, you can be running grunt watch in one terminal and go run grunt docs in another. 
you can be running grunt watch in one terminal and go and run a separate grunt watch task in a second terminal. Individual process based on the terminal you're in. And it's pretty awesome if you build Titanium maps to have grunt watch running at the same time and it builds it, builds a resource directory. Notice these are all the JavaScript files are there, they've all changed, and this just goes wham straight away up with thousands and thousands of lines going, it's wrong. <laughs> but grunt tasks, very, very useful for that. So that's pretty much um, the basic grunt setup we've got. Okay? That basic grunt setup, if I can follow the curve as well, is here. On this one, in my repo, it's public. You get the full grunt file, full JS doc setup, and everything else you need to do that. You will get all the node modules. So once you've downloaded that, if you want to use it, you don't have to use it. Um, within that, there is a set of grunt file which does just run it, it'll install your grunt globally, and then once you've got your package.json, and this is the final item for this, is that you can take that grunt file and your package.json file and nothing else, move it to a new directory and set that directory up to build your, to set your workflow up just by doing it in school. It will then read, and this is where the dependence come in, all of those development dependencies and load those node modules in place as you need them. So you can either have a master directory with three or four projects, which one run file does, or you can have separate project files of which you can just copy your grunt file and your package.json files into it, run npm install, that's it, you've got your whole grunt setup as you had in your previous directory structure. Uh, Okay, so we've just seen it but in. Summary. Grunt is a JavaScript task runner. That's it. It is as simple as that, but it can be as complicated or as robust or as user friendly as you want it to be. It's incredibly powerful. It's pretty easy to set up once you get your head round. Um, the object structure of the modules and it's very very useful to eliminate as much of the human error of a day-to-day -day basic task which you do. Which in most of our cases will be coding JavaScript and missing a semicolon or a comma. I do it hourly, I don't do it daily. <laughs> okay, that's it. Um, big buckets on there, that's who I am. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. We've got about four minutes left. And if you haven't got any questions, that makes me even happier. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to trust your No, just you follow the other. Um, people go, oh, Gulp's great for this and Grunt's great for that. Gulp is an opportunity to Grunt, Grunt was the original. They work pretty much the same way, and you don't want to run two different task runners. Pick which one you want. I, I use Grunt, I love Grunt. Yeah, so I can't really say Gulp. I know people who use Gulp in preference, but pick which one you want and stay with it. I think Gulp has about 5,000 to be fair to my job. But it's got to catch it on very fast. And there are, there's a couple of others as well. Um, but it, it is just a simple case of the whole point of the job is to task run it is to improve the workflow and minimize the human error for creators doing repetitive tasks. Which one you use is different, which one you prefer. 
Thank you. I believe it's good.